little logging trucks go by before we start our rant. All right, guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful summer morning here in uh, the end times here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. And we actually have guests coming in for the weekend to Bugs in a Jar, and little dog and I need to get their campsite ready. But before we go out doing that, guys, uh, oh yes, we do have a we do have an old friend. An old friend has returned to uh, Humpty Dumpty Tribe. For anybody, uh, <clears throat> for anybody with a brain, I don't know what that includes. Me, guess, guess who has returned from the from the grave? Dun dun dun. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Okay, the we are so fuck sign has reappeared here at Bugs in a Jar. How old is this sign? I think this sign is eight or nine years old. It is really starting. <laughs> I think mean, we are so fuck sign. I don't know. Uh, we might have to do a little, little cosmetic surgery. Although we will, you know, chronicling the collapse of the we are so fuck sign for those of us with a brain, but of course, uh, what I'm getting ready to share with uh, you now, guys, are for people without a brain. Uh, this came out, I uh, found this on Yahoo News today, decided to uh, <coughs> share this story with us, coming out of USA Today's opinion page, where we have this clueless fucking moron. I've mentioned this dude before named Bjorn Lomborg. Bjorn Lomborg is, is, is uh, <laughs> has shown up in USA Today, guys. When, just in case you forget who Bjorn is, uh, <clears throat> Bjorn Lomborg is p the author of False Alarm. False Alarm how climate change panic costs us trillions. Climate change panic costs, you know, kind of, I guess kind of like corona panic, uh, <coughs> cost us, whoever us is, trillions, hurts the poor, and fails to fix the planet. Yes, he is... Uh, <coughs> Also, president of the Copenhagen Consensus and a visiting fellow at the Hoover Institution. <clears throat> I could go off on an entire rant about the Hoover Institution. They're kind of a twin sister of the Heartland Institute. A, you know, one of these right-wing uh, <clears throat> think tanks funded, I'm sure, by the Koch brothers and Exxon and the usual band of suspects, but Bjorn Lomborg has totally topped himself with this. This is not the onion. This is not the onion. This is uh, USA Today on uh, <clears throat> the opening week of the summer of 2021, as the planet burns uh, with his absolute descent into madness, titled Climate Change Coverage Ignores Heavy Impact of Heat on Cold Deaths. Uh... So he starts out comparing uh, climate change panic to the corona panic. I'm not going to go there. Um, let's just get down to this. Uh, we're, we're, okay, just get down to the point of your, your barrage of idiocy here, Bajorn. When it comes to climate change, too often news stories and research focus only on the negative impacts. This makes commercial sense because stories of Armageddon generate 
more clicks. Yes, drive fundraising and make for better political campaigns. But it leaves us poorly informed. There you go. Uh, this makes commercial sense because stories of Armageddon generate more clicks. I, For those of you who are uh, aware of it, that I do have Collapse Chronicles monetized. You know, I'm doing this three-month... Uh, this three-month trial, you know, trial period of of trying to generate more clicks, and uh, over at Collapse Chronicles, I've given up on generating more clicks on reporting on Armageddon over at this channel. I have made since May first, May third, I, I monetized the channel. I have made one hundred sixty dollars over at Collapse Chronicles for reporting on Armageddon. Uh, if, if, if anybody wants to commit financial suicide on YouTube, you make a Doomer channel. Uh, reporting on Armageddon is the single biggest clickbait killer on the planet. Nobody gives a fuck about Armageddon. Alright, so, uh, yes. I got a sick, twisted laugh on how stories of Armageddon generating more clicks. But anyway, okay, let's get <clears throat> back to, uh, to Bajornir. Okay, last month, a landmark study in nature climate change made headlines around the world. Rising temperatures from global warming increase the number of heat deaths, now causing more than a third of heat deaths, rising temperatures, rising temperatures are now causing more than a third of heat deaths. I'm not sure what the other two-thirds of heat deaths, if they're not coming from right, anyway, I guess I'll have to go back and reread that landmark study. Anyway, or about 100,000 deaths per year. So, global warming, according to uh, according to Bajorn's reading of this landmark study, is claiming 100,000 people per year are dying of heat deaths. Obviously. This is a powerful narrative to justify urgent climate policies. But the study left out glaring truths. <clears throat> glaring truths that even its own authors have abundantly documented. Heat deaths are declining in countries with good data, likely because of ever more air conditioning. There you go. Uh, heat deaths are declining because of ever more air conditioning. I, I need to find the no shit Sherlock button that is somewhere out in the out in the bowels of the USS Maggie May. I think I still have the bullshit detected button and the no shit Sherlock button if ever there. I absolutely love it when we get to use the bullshit detected button in the same story as the no shit Sherlock button. Uh, heat deaths are declining because of ever more air conditioning. This is ab abundantly clear here in the United States, which has, which has seen increasing hot days since 1960, affecting a much greater population. Yet, the number of heat deaths in the U.S. has more than halved. So, while global warming could result in more heat deaths, technological developments, can you say an air conditioner in every house in the United States, Technolo technological developments in America 
actually resulting in fewer heat deaths. You know, I've I've uh, made this point many times. You know, my father was a successful doctor in Atlanta and, uh, you know, built his beautiful custom home that I was raised in. And in 1956 in Atlanta, Georgia, my, you know, my parents designed and built their own beautiful custom home to raise their five kids in. Uh, no air conditioning in the house. In 1956, successful doctors in Atlanta, Georgia, it didn't even, they didn't even think about it. I was raised in a house, uh, you know, I was born in late 1959 with no air conditioning. Uh, I, I, I don't know if any of my friends in, you know, in this upper middle class uh, white boy neighborhood that I was raised in in the 1960s and 70s had air conditioning. And now, if, if you even thought about, you know, like being a landlord, renting a house to a McDonald's burger flipper in Atlanta, Georgia, without central air, uh, you would be run out of Atlanta. You would probably be arrested. And uh, there you go. More air conditioning to save the planet from global warming. <clears throat> And I guess to illustrate that, they, he has a picture of a power plant. I think that was the editor, some editor at, uh, <laughs> at USA Today making a very subtle, uh, a very subtle editorial comment about the, this bullshit, uh, recommending more air conditioning. More importantly, cold deaths vastly outweigh heat deaths worldwide. This is not just true for cold countries like Canada, but also for warmer countries like the US, Spain, and Brazil. Even in India, even in India, cold deaths outweigh heat deaths by seven to one, globally, about 1.7 million deaths, deaths are caused by cold every year, more than five times the number of heat deaths. This matters. This matters because rising temperatures from global warming will reduce the number of cold deaths, uh, this is absolutely when I would be slamming the no shit Sherlock button. Uh, you cannot argue with Bjorn's thesis here that rising temperatures from global warming will reduce the number of cold deaths. Yet, the Nature Climate Change Study scrupulously decided to only look at heat deaths by limiting its research to the four warmest months. Imagine that, doing a story on heat deaths and uh, those, those cherry pickers over at Nature Climate Change looking at, I'm assuming, June, July, August, and September, you know, those damn cherry pickers uh, just leaving out uh, November, December, January, February, and March, I guess. Yes. <clears throat> Thereby ignoring the number of cold deaths, which were five times higher. Okay. And then we really get to the bold, you know, the bold print here. In case you're unaware of this, Cold deaths plummet as temperatures rise. There you go. Cold deaths plummet as temperature rises. In The Lancet, some of these same authors estimated recent changes in full year heat and cold deaths from the 1990s through the 2010s reliably 
reliably, they found that heat deaths increased, but cold deaths decreased even more for all regions and on average by twice as much. This suggests that leaving out cold deaths flips the central message. You know, the central message being that more people are going to fry by heat deaths, but the central message, uh, if you're uh, working for the Hoover Institute, is that global warming is good because less people are dying from freezing to death. <clears throat> global warming, <clears throat> like how he says, up to now, the three most important words in this sentence, up to now, global warming up to now possibly means about 100,000 more heat deaths. But the Lancet's full year research, you know, looking at winter time, if you look at all 12 months instead of four months, but the Lancet full year research shows it, meaning right, you know, rising temperatures also very likely means we have avoided even more cold deaths, perhaps as much as twice that, you know, the 100,000 equivalent to 200,000 avoided cold deaths. Yes, climate change is still a real problem. It affects many other areas and even for heat and cold deaths, very high temperature rises could see extra heat deaths outweigh the avoided cold deaths in the long run. Again, what is your definition of long run? But we are not well informed when climate change narratives only tell us the negative stories. Not only does technology read more air conditioning, not only does more air conditioning make us much more resilient, but for now, for now, global warming likely saves us more deaths than it causes, possibly 100,000 lives each year. So thank you, global warming, for, uh, for saving the lives of 100,000 more clueless fucking morons on this planet so they can all run out and buy air conditioners. Uh, by the way, I have two fucking air conditioners for sale, $30 a piece. $30 a piece, you can get both of them for $50 up here in fucking Ithaca, New York, where it was 40 degrees uh, two nights ago. I have not gotten one phone call on my two air conditioners, but Ham My Little Tail does have two window unit air conditioners. You can have them both for $50 and save yourself from dying of the heat. I think we're going to hit 79 today, but looks like we'll be back at 90 on Sunday. So, uh, thank you, uh, Bjorn Lomborg <clears throat> and the Hoover Institute for, uh, I wonder how much they paid USA Today for that fucking horseshit. But anyway, it is Friday. I got to get serious now and Go over to mongabay.com. Uh, little dog, I got some bad news. We got to go over and do, do another rant. We're heading over to Collapse Chronicles in mongabay.com for my weekly uh, <clears throat> ecological meltdown roundup rant. So you can find me over at uh, 
Collapse Chronicles preaching Armageddon, and I will probably make about a dollar fifty off of that rant. Look out, little dog. No, we have another uh, another rant. You're not getting out to go look for jippies. No, we have a whole other rant. I know it. You don't want to hear that. Bye, guys. Thank you.